Are you looking for big performance in a small package? You need to give the newly released Tid Radio H3 a look. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new H3 Analog FM HT Radio from Tid Radio. The Tid Radio H3 can be considered the little brother to the Tid Radio H8 Analog FM HT. However, unlike many scaled down versions of existing products, the H3 includes additional features and capabilities, not less. While at the same time, it costs less too. As we get started, let me welcome you to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and be sure to subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. I need to let you know that Tid Radio sent me this radio a month or so ago before kicking off their marketing campaign, so I've been playing around with it for a little bit. Besides answering an occasional question, they don't have any input to the video itself. When compared to the H8, the H3 has fewer buttons due to its smaller size, so some buttons do double duty. Its color screen is a bit smaller than the H8, but has the same fonts and screen layout. On-screen icons are also the same. Here are a couple of my favorite H3 features. First, and this is a biggie, you don't need a programming cable when programming using the manufacturer's CPS or Chirp. The USB chip is in the radio itself instead of the USB cable. That means you can use a USB Type-C cable alone. The radio comes up in the device manager on a separate COM port, so you can easily see what port the set on the CPS. Next is the H3's compact size. As you'll see in a minute, the H3 fits easily in your hand or pocket. Next on my short list is that the H3 includes the airband frequencies. When tuned to the airband frequencies, be sure to set menu 48 to AM to receive your local air traffic broadcasts. It looks like the H3 is being marketed beyond the ham arena. It has transmit capabilities in a much broader range than U.S. ham authorizations. To help you stay within limits, the radio has a mode select feature accessed by pressing the PTT and star key while turning it on. The choices are ham, GMRS, and normal. I didn't see much difference between the ham and normal mode in my cursory exploration. The ham mode allowed some out-of-band transmission, so be careful when setting up your radio. The GMRS mode populated the GMRS channels and limited transmissions to those frequencies. I programmed the included NOAA weather channels into the programmable side key so they are easily accessible. As with the H8, the H3 has programmable microphone gain, version information, and what they call an LED breathe setting, where you can set the top LEDs to flash or breathe when the radio is on but the screen is off. Now. Let's take a quick tour of what you'll get and the radio's exterior. So here's the box the TID Radio H3 comes in. Let's take a look at what you'll find inside. The first thing we'll look at are the charging accessories. So you get a USB-C cable here, uh, A on one side, C on the other. Not only will it plug in here to this little wall wart and into the charger, but it'll plug directly into the radio and when plugged directly into the radio, as I mentioned, you can also do your programming with this cable, so you don't need a separate radio programming cable. As usual, there are a couple of uh, attachment accessories that come with the radio. 
The belt clip is in this plastic bag with a couple of those very tiny screws that are used to attach it to the radio. So I've left them here in the bag so I don't lose those. And then the wrist strap that comes with most of these radios that I tend to use in that I can be kind of dropsy sometimes with these radios. Last in the category of accessories is the antenna. It's a little rubber ducky. It's not the stubby one. Um, it's kind of slender and it's fairly flexible. And then it's a dual band antenna and the frequencies in which the antenna will work are on the little insert in the bottom here of the antenna attachment. You'll also notice that the socket side is here on the antenna, which means the plug side is gonna be on the radio itself. Now, speaking of the radio, let's do a radio tour. So let's start with doing a size comparison with this little guy. So here's its big brother. Here is the TID Radio H8. So you can see kind of the difference there in size. It's narrower, it's shorter, and with a 2500 milliamp hour battery, it's about the same width. And so here it is compared to the Radiotity GS5B, which in and of itself is not a big HT, but uh, you can see the little H3 is quite a bit smaller than the size here of this GS5B. So with the comparison done, let's take a look at uh, some of the aspects of the radio. Uh, the screen is up here. It's got a kind of a compressed button uh, panel right here. So for example, instead of having a separate AB button, the AB button is paired up with the pound key. Bluetooth and menu keys are paired up here. That's the blue one. The VFO mode and memory mode plus the exit mode are on this orange key. So, so if you're in the menu mode, you can push the little uh, orange key and it'll take you or exit you out of menus. Over here, we've got a couple of push to talks. Actually, you can, you can program these a programmable side key over here, which is kind of handy. We've got the battery across the back. Here are the sockets for the belt clip screws. And because the radio is so small, the belt clip goes into the battery. Over here, we've got a cover that covers three different things. It's the usual K connector, which has the speaker and microphone inputs there, as you're used to seeing. But it also covers up the USB-C again, which you can use for programming, so that's pretty handy. On the top of the radio, here's the antenna connector. It's got the little spike there for the, the plug side of the antenna. It's got an LED here for a flashlight, and then the on-off and volume switch is right here. And then there are two little LEDs here that will flash, you know, when you're transmitting or when it's receiving. And here are the LEDs that'll flash when you have the little breathe mode set up. Okay, now let's turn it on and do a quick tour of some of the features and the menus. So we've got the radio turned on here, and you can see that this display is very similar to the H8. It's got a power indicator here at the, across the top, the transmit power, uh, a little antenna icon for when it's transmitting. It shows that it's now low power and wide mode. The battery indicator is right here. The frequency that I've got selected is there. The little um, swirls there represent uh, dual receive. It's in VFO mode, and so some of the other icons that you can see here. And then to change it in channel mode, I can use the orange button. And so now it gives me the channel mode, and I can set a channel. So for example, I can set my channel 3. And it shows down here that it's a repeater over in Sun City here in the Arizona area. It's got a CTCSS is off when I um, am receiving, but if I press the transmit, it's going to show CT because I have a CTCSS code set for that repeater. The lower frequency is there, and so again, I can go from A to B by pressing the AB button, which is paired with the pound key. And so you can see that it moved down there, and then it just has basically a random frequency right now and that shows up in the display and go back up here. So those are my primary keys that you're gonna see. To enter the menu, I can press the blue key shortly, and now I'm in the menu mode and they work like every other radio you've ever used. I'll go from the, the, the lowest menu item number zero up. Here's 48, which is the AM band. I need to turn that on if I wanna use Airband. 
So I've got the mic gain set on five. Let's press menu again. That'll move it down to five and I can see how far up my mic gain will go. And it goes up to seven, eight, up to nine. So when you listen to the audio snippet, you'll know that the mic gain is on five. I'll select that with the blue key. And then I'll exit menu with the orange key. And the rest of the menus work the same as you're used to seeing. The last thing I'll point out to you here is a long press on the blue key will turn on the Bluetooth mode. So you see the little Bluetooth icon turned on, and that will allow you to interact uh, with your cell phone with the OD Master app if you choose to program with the OD Master app. Turn it off, another long press, and that'll save you some power. Now I've got the radio set to continuous on in the brightness display here so it doesn't flash on and off while we're recording but those have a number of uh, choices too so i'll probably go back and set brightness to like 15 seconds so i'm not burning through the battery quite as often that's a quick tour of the menu system and so there are a couple of other things uh, that we can deal with here so i can press the the lower programming key right down here short press turns on the flashlight, flashing, turns it off, a long press. That will turn on the weather mode. Uh, the weather channels are pre-programmed into the radio. And then a, a press on this middle key transmits on the second transmitter. And so you can see I've got this other frequency. If I press on this, it's going to move the little carrot down there. And then the primary transmit is going to be the upper key right there. So that's a quick tour of the radio. It's, it's again, it's compact. It fits easily into your hand, fits easily into a pocket. And if you're looking for something small for your everyday carry, the H3 might be just up your alley. Just a quick break to let you know that you can support the Gadget Talk channel by using Buy Me a Coffee. It's a crowdsourcing platform where viewers can make one time donations or become members of the Gadget Talk community. Your support helps provide resources to purchase some of the items reviewed on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Now, back to our topic. Now, let's take a listen to the audio quality and Check out the power output readings. H3 received test, one, two, three, four, five. Test, test, test. Test out. H3 transmit test, one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Test, test, test. Test out. So let's take a quick look at the power output. I've got the radio connected to my MFJ 874 watt meter. I've got it set to power and 5 watt scale, which we're going to read on the bottom arc, and we're transmitting into a dummy load. So here is the VHF call channel on high power. Let's see what we get. Looks like we've got about 3.9. Let's change the power to low. So here we are on low power again, VHF. Looks to be about 0 0.7, 0 0.7 on low power. Now let's go up to the UHF band. So here's the UHF call frequency on high power. Looks like about 3, 3.1. And now the same frequency on low power. And again, we're reading on the bottom arc. It looks to be about 0.3 watts, 0.3 watts here. So there we have it. Now, one of the things that's troublesome with these budget-priced ham radios coming from China is the signal purity aspect. This is a long-standing problem that they've made some progress on, and I've certainly given that feedback to TID Radio as I've worked with them on a couple of other radios that they've provided to me for reviews. So in this H3, we're going to take a look and see how it does. Now, the requirements for this frequency at this power level is the harmonic needs to be at least 40 decibels below the fundamental and it has to have a power reading of less than 25 microwatts which is a very very small amount 
Now on this display, what you see is an input attenuation of 40 dB to keep from damaging the tiny SA. And the little blue line rep represents about minus 16 decibels, which is the equivalent of that 25 microwatt. So let's key up the H3 and see how it does. It takes a moment for this to settle down as the tiny SA computes what it's looking for here. And so this one, it looks to me to be a pass. Um, this is consumer grade kit that I'm doing the measurements on, but I've got about minus 50 below the fundamental and the first harmonic there at about 293 or so is sitting right at 16 below, 16 and a half, something like that. So this is a pass. It's a, it's a clean radio signal and so it would be good for ham radio use. Here are a couple of screenshots of the TID Radio CPS and OD Master app interface. Take a look at my TID Radio H8 review and OD Master review linked on the end card to this video if you want a more detailed description of those features. They're identical on the H3. Well, that's the review. Please consider using the TID Radio affiliate link in the video description. It will provide you with a discount and a small commission to me, which helps purchase some of the things we review on the channel. Use the coupon code GADGETTALK to save on your order. I'll include an Amazon link as well. Again, if you found the video helpful, please click thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I've linked the H8 review and OD Master tutorial over here. Thanks for watching and 73.